Hallelujah, hallelujah. You are all welcome to this segment of our daily devotional episodes. Now we are taking another step of faith into this episode again. And the title of our today's episode is The Light of His Righteousness. Hallelujah. The Light of His Righteousness. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. And our Bible reference is taken from the book of Philippians, chapter 2, verse 5. Hallelujah. It says, that ye may be blameless and harmless, the Son of God, without rebuke, in the midst of a crooked and perverse nation, among whom ye shine as light in the world. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. He said, first paragraph said, in Matthew chapter 5, verse 14, NKJV, the Bible said, the Lord Jesus said, Hallelujah. You are the light of the world. A city that is set on a hill cannot be hidden. It bears comparison to what we read in our opening scripture. In Isaiah 60 verse 2, the Bible said, The prophet prophesied, For we behold the darkness and cover the earth, and gross darkness the people, but the Lord shall arise upon thee, and his glory shall be seen upon thee. Glory be to God, the glory of Almighty God shall be seen in thee. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. In Christ Jesus, the glory of the Lord is resident in us. So much that the world declare that we are his glory. We are the light of his righteousness. In dark and, and cynical world, hallelujah. It makes no different what the darkness and problems in the world are. You are the hope and the solution that the world needs. You are the hope and the solution that the world needs today. Hallelujah. The Lord Jesus said in John chapter 9 verse 5, As long as I am in this world, I am the light of the world. First John chapter 4 verse 17 says, As he is, so are we in this world. The problems and hardship in this world today are your opportunity. They are your opportunity. Hallelujah. To shine and manifest the glory and light of his righteousness. Glory to be to God. As long as you are in this world, you are the light of the world. Light gives direction. You are the one to show the world how to live, what to do, and how to be successful in the midst of the darkness. In John chapter 8 verse 12, the Bible says, Jesus said, I am the light of the world. He that followed me shall not walk in darkness but shall have the light of life. Glory be to Almighty God, both now and forever, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Again, it brings to mind the word of the prophet Isaiah. The people that walk in darkness have seen a great light. They that dwell in the land of the shadow of death, upon them had the light shine. Isaiah chapter 9 verse 2. Yet through you, they are seeing this great light. That's your ministry. To turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God. Acts chapter 26 verse 18. Hallelujah. There is no greater light than the light of his righteousness. And we are the bearers of his righteousness. Say to yourself, say, I am the bearer of his righteousness. Taking the light of the gospel to the ends of the earth. Praise God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an awesome message. This is so inspiring, so remarkable. Oh, glory be to God. If I were you, I would not waste time to still go back to this video and watch it and watch it, study this world. You will see that your life will be catapulted from the situation it is now to another realm of glory. Hallelujah. Praise be to God, both now and forever in Jesus' name. Now we are going to take the confession. But before taking the confession, we have some Bible, beautiful Bible references attached to this wonderful and marvelous word of today. So we're going to quickly take the Bible reference. After then, we say the confession. Then we end with our proper affirmation. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The book of Acts chapter 26 verse 16 to 18. The Bible says, But rise and stand upon thy feet, for I have appeared unto thee for this purpose for to make thee a minister and a witness for both these things which thou hast seen and of those things in the in which in the which i will appear unto thee 17 
Deliverance thee from the people and from the Gentiles unto whom now I send thee. 18. To open their eyes and to turn them from darkness to light and from the power of Satan unto God that they may receive forgiveness of sin and inheritance among them which are sanctified by faith that is in me. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. 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 In Matthew chapter 24 verse 14, the Bible says, And this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for a witness unto all nations, and then shall the end come. In Mark chapter, 15, that, chapter 16, verse 15 to 16, the Bible says, And he say unto them, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. 16. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we are going to take our prayer, our confession. We're going to take now we are going to take our confession. After the confession, we'll now move to affirmation. Glory be to God. You can put your hand on your chest and raise one to heaven and repeat after me accordingly if you can. Hallelujah. I am the bearer of God's righteousness, taking the light of the gospel, which has been committed to my trust, to the end of the earth. Through me, many are turned from darkness to the light and, cap and, cap and catapulted into their inheritance in the kingdom of light. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now you are going to set your feet, your gaze on the screen. Set down. Watch this because this is one of the most powerful parts of this message for the day. It's a word of affirmation. It's a declaration which you're going to say right away. And you see the manifestation of God's power in your life as we are talking, we are speaking right now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Now you can say it with me. I live my day in health and prosperity. I do not suffer from headache, cold, fever, diabetes, stomach, pain, or any such thing. The Holy Spirit in me keeps my spirit, souls, and body invigorated and ever alive. I have the life of God in me. It is full in its fullness. My life is sickness proof. Hallelujah. Poverty proof and failure proof. I'm full of joy, basking in the grace and glory of Christ. In Christ, I have everything that pertains to life and godliness. My body is perfect by the unfailing word of God. And I flourish in health and strength today like never before. Every fiber of my being is energized and infused with miracle working power. Hallelujah. Today and always, God's grace is active in my life and sufficient for me. In all day, in all things, thus I rule dominate, dominantly over demons of darkness and sickness, disease, poverty, failure, and death. Glory be to God. I reign triumphantly and join all the benefits of divine life in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. The enemy has nothing in me because my body belongs to God. In the name of Jesus, I refuse arthritis, diabetes, cancers, tumors, paralysis, kidney failure, heart failure, and lung failure. In any place in my body, everything about my body is perfect. My lungs, liver, heart, blood, and every part of me, I declare that I live, rule, and reign above them all. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. I reject sickness. Hallelujah. Or anything that represents darkness or infirmity. Anything that causes sorrow and depression is far from me. Jesus is Lord over my life. Therefore, Satan has no claim over me or mine. The joy of the Lord is my strength. I will never be weak. The joy of the of the joy produces good laughter deep in my spirit, causing my health to bloom and flourish. I know no depression or oppression because I am buoyant and the spirit, the unspeakable joy overflowing in my heart. Nothing of the devil can stay in me, for I have embraced the transcendent life in Christ Jesus. I am partaker of the divine nature. I am strengthened and invigorated by the Holy Spirit in my inner man. And I function in God's divine power that works in me in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. 
Amen. Amen. La consoli en zanzoli va cocher de que te libre gado son tole baba. Rapa poca libre que tu son tole ma coso da cantar baba la caston de que dia. Elle est que ton da libando libra caton stoli en zanzoli va cocher de que te libre gado son ta baba. Machala va coso de que te libre gado son tole baba la caston de que te libre baba. Father, it's your word that your children have declared unto their self, Lord. Me li kariba kuma libre que tu son tole baba. Father, they receive grace to exploit. Ma re ke liba koshe te libra kado so to liba ba. Your divine power is at work in them. E raba kolia se ke do so to liba ba rakashe me ke te liba ba. Father, they increase in all their endeavors, Lord. Ma re ke lebro kado so to liba ba. Father, they are growing in grace, Lord. In the knowledge of wisdom of the Almighty Father, they are increasing their daily finances. Liba karaba ko so de ke te liba ba. You said your word you shall supply them all their needs according to your Riches in your glory, Lord. My reke libra kato so toli ma koshe de kete de baba. My Lord and my Father, your grace is sufficient for them, Lord. Father, they live in the hard world, but they live, O oh God, in heaven. They use, they take advantage of it. Father, prosperity, prosperity, and ever increasing glory in this world of them. In the name of the Lord Jesus, they lack nothing because your grace is at work in their life, Lord. They receive perfection of grace and glory in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your word. Thank you for your grace at working in them. Oh, blessed be your holy name, both now and forevermore. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Father, your word, your children have heard your word. Father, it shall never depart out of their life, O oh God in heaven, but produce more increase, more fruit of righteousness. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Thank you, dear Heavenly Father, for your word is say and amen. In Jesus' most righteous name we pray. Amen, amen, amen. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, glory be to God, hallelujah. What an awesome time we had in God's presence. I believe the word has so transformed your life. It has blessed you endlessly. Oh, glory be to God, hallelujah. Please, thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us in our today episode. Please don't forget to like the video. Please, your comment on this comment section. Ask your question your observation i'm always available to attend to you and please don't forget to subscribe to our channel share the video to your brothers and your sisters to your neighbor for them to enjoy this free benefit you are enjoying as well oh thank you so much for joining us today oh 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 you are blessed you are so much blessed you are so much blessed beyond human imagination the lord has spoken he has said it and so shall it be in your life both now and forever in jesus most righteous name we pray amen amen thank you so much for joining god bless you i love you bye first peter chapter two i want to read to you from verse five king james version ye also as lively stones that means living stones are built up a spiritual house an holy priesthood to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. He says we are built by God as a spiritual house. He's not talking about the building like the auditorium. He's talking about our life. As God's people who are born again. The Bible says that we have been built by the ministries of the prophets and apostles of Christ. And set on the foundation which is Christ Jesus. And that we are a spiritual house. And that our responsibility as a spiritual house is to offer up to God spiritual sacrifices. In Christianity, we are not in a social fraternity. It is a spiritual family of God. And we do have a ministry in the earth. 
We have a responsibility in the earth. We got a job to do in the earth. God didn't put us here so we can just have a nice life. God didn't put us here so that we can, uh, by His name, get nice things by faith and uh, live a life that is satisfying to us. There's more to life. He says, we have been built a spiritual house to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Which means each one of us is in office. We got to understand this is God's dream. God had a dream. God had a dream. He had a dream. In other words, a desire. Something that he wanted. In Exodus chapter 19, would you turn in there quickly? Exodus chapter 19, I'll read to you from verse 5 into verse 6. Verse 5. Now therefore, God talking to the children of Israel by Moses. Now therefore, if ye will obey my voice indeed, and keep my covenant, then ye shall be a peculiar treasure unto me above all people, for the earth is mine. God said this to the children of Israel. He said, if you will obey my covenant, then you shall be to me a peculiar treasure. Above all people. He says, for the earth is mine. In other words, everything belongs to me. It's up to me to choose what I prefer. It's up to me to choose who I want to honor. If I choose to make you a peculiar treasure above other people, that's my business. Because all the earth is mine. Uh, Did you see that there? All right. Now, in verse 6. Now, you know, you know, people say we are all the same. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We are all the same, but we are not favored the same. <laughs> Hallelujah. Verse 6. And ye shall be unto me a kingdom of priests. This is remarkable. A kingdom of priests. That's what is meant by royal priesthood. Which means a fraternity or order of priests that are royalty. This is wonderful. King priests in the order of Melchizedek. All right, look at it. Verse 6. And he shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and an holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. A kingdom of priests. A peculiar treasure above all people. What an honor. He said, if you will obey my covenant. They didn't. They broke it. They breached it. They couldn't make it. So they didn't become a kingdom of priests. Because they failed to keep God's covenant. And so, God abolished the covenant. He said, I'm going to make a new one. And he did. Hallelujah. And he did. And brought us into it as beneficiaries. Now, he doesn't make a promise to us. He has fulfilled his dream. We have come into the place. Oh God. I wish you'll understand this. So you can grasp my soonnesses. You see, this is the reason a lot of people can't understand how why we are the way we are and why we do what we do. Christianity is no religion. To many Christians, and including many preachers, Christianity is a great religion. To me, it's not a religion. It's life. 
And I think that that's why some of them can't understand our, uh, our thinkings of the gospel, our mentality, our way of life. Why are we like this? And so we look like we are not real to them. We look like we are speaking from outer space. Because they can't understand this stuff. They got a problem with this. Like they had a problem with Jesus. Because Jesus spoke differently. He said, I am from above. See, we are not on a journey into Christ. Mm -mm, We have arrived in Christ. He didn't say you are marching to Zion like they were marching many years ago. I don't know that, I know that, well, there's some people who are still marching today. They're still on their way in the wilderness of life. And I I, I didn't find myself in the wilderness of life. Never been there. I wasn't on my journey from Egypt to to Canaan. Uh Uh-uh. I was born into the promised land. Born right into it. Never on a journey towards it. Born right into it. And if you're of the religious kind, you may not like this. You know, it sounds like I'm being braggadocious, so you may not like it. But listen, if you don't talk like this, you'll never inherit it. Christianity is for the tough-minded. It's for the tough-minded. You can't come into this arena without staring the nest of your adversaries. They want to kill you for it. But they never can. They just hate you without a course. But you don't care. Woohoo! Yeah, see, in 1 Peter chapter 2, now we're in the New Testament, 1 Peter chapter 2, we started out in chapter 2 and verse 5. But now I want to read um, verse 9. But ye are. <laughs> I like it when the Bible says ye are. That's your going to be. Ye are, ye are, ye are. If ye are, then ye is. Ye are. If ye are, uh, he says yeah, but ye are a chosen generation. I'm God's choice. Chosen generation. He is talking about a breed. A special breed. A class. You're born into that class. With a peculiar nature. (laughs) But ye are... A chosen generation, a royal priesthood. Ye are a royal priesthood. This is what was promised to the children of Israel on the condition of obedience to the covenant. And they didn't make it. Now God doesn't give us any condition. He just says, hey, you're born that way. Because you're born again. You're born in Christ. You are a Christian. You're in Christ now. So, he says, you are a chosen generation. That means you got peculiar genes. Generation, genes, genealogy. Do you understand? We got a family tree. We're coming from Christ. Oh my. A chosen generation. A royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people <laughs> that you should show forth, show forth, display, show forth the praises of Him <laughs> who had called you out of darkness into His marvelous. Or inspiring lights display the virtues and perfections. Dear Lord Jesus, 
هو ما you know the greatest crisis in the world is the identity crisis the question who am I why am I here why was I born where am I going what's the meaning of my life When you come to understand this stuff about Christ and his church, the problem of identity is solved. Because you come home, you know who you are, your future is clear before you. No more question about your future. No more question. I get letters and, 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 you know, messages all the time. I, before I came up here tonight, a gentleman sent me a text on the occasion of his birthday. He said, I met you 18 years ago. And my life has been different ever since. I've had a fulfilling life. Because what I learned from you all these years, 18 years. And now he testifies of a tremendous fulfilling life. Same story. There's nobody yet that I have been in contact with through the word of God who turned out a failure. <laughs> Praise God. Not possible. Not possible. No, not possible. The only kind of folks you can find who will say, well, I, I used to be there, and uh, something went wrong. He wasn't listening. No, he wasn't listening. This Bible wasn't written by Pastor Chris. He wasn't listening. This thing hasn't failed anybody yet. But you know, like many people are, they're always looking for what's your formula. What's the short court? As a student, I was very bad in mathematics for many years. Couldn't get past 44% or something like that. I was bad in it. Because, see, I didn't know why until I found out. When I got to my class four, which was, um, I guess, I don't know what they call that today, SS2 or something like that, something like that, yeah. When I got there, I made up my mind. First time, I made up my mind. I'm fed up of failing mathematics. I'd failed it almost all my life. <laughs> now I was in class four, and guess what? Something new had happened to me. The Spirit of God has started ministering in my life. Things have changed. And so I said, I don't want to fail this thing anymore. I want to know what's there. Now, I was taught to solve and practice the questions. Just be practicing. And trying to answer the questions. And I tried and tried and tried. Never worked. And to cram the formula. I crammed the formula and forgot them in the exam hall. So something was wrong with what I was taught. Because it failed. Until I decided I was not going to fail mathematics anymore. It was time for me to know it. I wanted to know it. I prayed to God that I want to know it. You said the Holy Spirit will teach us all things. Mathematics is one of them. I want to know. So I took out my, my math textbook. I began to read it like I read other subjects. Instead of going to questions and solving and trying to you know crack my brain and trying to remember formula i started reading the theory behind the maths that's the key i began to study the theory behind the maths the theory behind the formula why was this formula so what was the theory on which it was based i don't want to cram it i want to derive it 
And when I understood the, 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 the theory behind it, I began to learn to derive the formula myself. So when I read a question and understood the question, I derived the formula. I found out why the, the, the examples they gave, why the answers were so. Then I began to love mathematics. I couldn't but solve mathematical problems every day. I just loved maths. It became my first subject from the worst to the best. I just love maths. I found a secret. You know what? I never finished my maths questions. I never finished in any exam. I never finished. I had lots because I didn't know them just looking at them. And for the objective, you just go, dun, dun, dun. You know? Now, that was where I was really bad. Doesn't mean I was bad in other subjects. I was bad in math, I tell you. But you know what? When I learned this thing, things changed for me. When I did my WIKE exam for my maths, 30 minutes before the end, I was through. I was waiting for them to finish up. Not because I didn't know anymore. I finished everything. The only thing I couldn't recognize was number 7B. You see it? It was question number 7B. I had no clue. And I left it alone. But for everything else, I so solved them and I knew I was done with them and I came out with an A1 for it. Now, now here's my point. Here's my point. There was theory behind the maths. It's the same thing with life. People want the shortcut. And so when they're, done, when they, when they're trying to shortcut and it doesn't work, they don't say, you know, that thing is fake. I tried it too. They're lying to you. No, you're the one lying. You just didn't know it. Find out about the theory. What did Jesus come to do? See, I found out about that. Who is the Holy Spirit? What is he doing in me? What is his ministry in my life today? What's the reason for the Bible? This book, what is it for? Why is it here? The theory of the cross, understand it. Understand the tenets of the gospel of Christ. Understand who we are. And this life will no longer be a mystery to you. You getting it? Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Man, oh, man. Let me take you just a little further. There's so much to share along this line. Let me take you a little further. Psalm 80, 87. Oh, glory to God. Mm, 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 mm. <laughs> From verse 1. His foundation is in the holy mountain. Have you seen that? His foundation is in the holy mountains. The Lord loveth the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Hmm. He loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. The Lord loves the gates of Zion more than all the dwellings of Jacob. Zion, he calls the city of God. This is talking about the church. This is us. This is God's place. This is God's city. And he says, glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. He says, his foundations. You can find God's, look at it, read that verse one again. His foundation is in the holy mountains. Where is this? Now you're quiet. You're thinking, what was he talking about? You'd know in a moment. Turn the book of Hebrews for a moment. Hebrews chapter 11. Mm, 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 mm. Mm. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. I'm still on the inside, brother. Verse 8. 
Hebrews chapter 11 verse 8. By faith, Abraham, when he was called to go out into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed, and he went out not knowing whither he went. By faith he sojourned in the land of promise, as in a strange country, dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city. Oh God. He looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. He looked for a city which had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Are you still there? He looked for a city that had foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Foundations refers to principles. He's talking about principles. Principles. Institution of truths. Says Abraham was looking for a city that had principles of truth, a system of truths, whose builder and maker is God. He didn't want to, you see, when he said he was looking for a city, he wasn't looking for a city in the world, because the world is cities were made by men. With the laws of men. But he was looking for a city. That's why the Bible says he went out not knowing where he was going. He acted on God's word when God said, go, I will show you a place. I will show you a place. Did Abraham ever find the place? The Bible says in all of Abraham's journey, God never gave him a place that was large enough to set his foot on. Which means that what the city that Abraham was looking for was not in the earth. Until God said, look toward the north and the south and the east and the west. As far as your eyes can see, that I've given unto you. And Abraham looked everywhere. And what Abraham saw included the world and beyond. The Bible says God willed the world to Abraham. And that was not enough. Because Abraham was looking for a city. That had principles of life. Whose builder and maker is God. Abraham's city. No wonder the Bible says he's a father of faith. Abraham was looking for a city. Whose foundations were made by God. And the Bible says God's foundations. His foundation is in where? The holy mountains. And where? The city Abraham was looking for was the city of Zion. He said, glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. This is the city that Abraham was looking for. And he saw it by faith. In Hebrews chapter 12. Sovra Magista. Hebrews chapter 12. Verse 22. The Bible says, but ye, ye, brothers and sisters, but ye, ye are come, ye have arrived unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to an innumerable company of angels, to the general assembly and church of the firstborn, which are registered in heaven. And to God the judge of all. And to the spirits of just men made perfect. And to Jesus the mediator of the new covenant. And to the blood of sprinkling that speaketh better things than that of Abel. Somebody say hallelujah. (laughs) Ye are come to Mount Zion. The city of the living God. The city that Abraham was looking for. The city of which he says glorious things are spoken of thee. O city of God. Do you belong in that city? If you belong in that city, live like one. 
Think like one. Talk like one. Go back in there, Psalm 87. Woo-hoo. Man, oh man. Psalm 87, verse 3. He says, glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. If you're a member of that city, glorious things are spoken of you. Glorious things are spoken of you. Glorious things. Are, why don't you find out about what these glorious things are? You know, some people like to reproach us, but we are irreproachable. <laughs> Hallelujah. So Makida. Glorious things, verse 3. Glorious things are spoken of thee, O city of God. I will, mm, 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 I wish you understand this. I will make mention of Rahab. That's a symbolic name for Egypt. I will make mention of Rahab and Babylon to them that know me. Behold, Philistia and Tyre with Ethiopia. This man was born there. Ooh. This man was born there. He says, I'll make mention of great cities, great nations, Egypt, Babylon, Philistia, Tyre. This man was born there. Like somebody says, yeah, I was born in Britain. I was born in America. I was born in Switzerland. You know, people, they like to talk about their ethnic nationality. This man was born there. I'll boast of these ones. Yeah, he was born there. He's British. He's American. He's Lebanese. This man was born there. Come with me. Verse 5. And of Zion it shall be said, this and that man was born in her. And the highest himself shall establish her. The Lord shall count when he writeth up the people. That means when he records. When he accounts. When he numbers the people. That this man was born there. Oh God. You know what he's talking about? Oh. Oh, glory to God. You know, I think through the word, the Father, I was born in Zion. It says, the Lord shall count when he numbers the people. That this man was born there. The day you were born, your mother wrote in your certificate the city in which you were born. When you were born again, God wrote the date that you were born in Zion. In his record, you were born in Zion. This thing we're talking about is real. You know, but some of us have functioned so much in the word that we don't recognize spiritual truths. We take the worldly things as though that's what's real. And fail to open our spirits to what God says. It says the Lord shall count when he righted up the people that this man was born there. Born in Zion. Ye are come. Ye have arrived. You belong in Zion. You belong in the city of the living God. The heavenly Jerusalem. And in that place, there are foundations. Principles of life. A system of truths. 
<laughs> God's Spirit is upon you. And His mighty presence is working in your life. His grace is multiplied in your life. Be successful everywhere you go. Be prosperous everywhere you go. The wisdom of God is functioning for you. Working for you. You will speak as the oracle of God. In the name of Jesus. Because greater is He that is in you. Than He that is in the world. No power can overcome you. Because the Spirit of God is working in your life. Promotion is yours. Increase is yours. Progress is yours. Health is yours. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every hindrance on your way. Is removed in the name of Jesus. Every obstacle is removed in the name of Jesus. You are making progress. You are moving forward. In the name of Jesus. No weapon fashioned against you shall prosper. Speak in other tongues right now. Pray in the Holy Ghost. Speak in other tongues. Thank you, Lord. Oh, talking wisdom. I don't understand why. This is my shoulder. Talk wisdom, brother. Talk wisdom. You're going. Ah! Ah! Oh, oh, oh. Ah! To be healed. Have you ever, just a moment, have you ever met some people? They hit their, ay, mommy, oh, mommy. Even some elderly people, they call the name of their grandfather. Ay, daddy, oh. It's wrong. Say, ay, be healed. If you don't say that, it may take you to the hospital. And the little thing can become big. Before you know what, they say you need an operation. Then they say they are sorry, they cannot really do it. You have to carry this thing the rest of your life. It was a little thing yesterday. Now you can't understand it. It's gone worse. Give no place to the devil. To me, it doesn't matter whether it's small or big. If I hit back up, heal in Jesus' name. Heal. I'm not ready for any pains. Heal. Say this. Uh, uh, in the name of Jesus. Hey. Listen, even though we are calm, quiet, nice, loving, we are militant. We are. You know, you can't continue. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you. He's not ready for that kind of thing. Huh? I just thank you. You know, trying to be sweet to him. Sweet Jesus. He likes that when you worship. Okay, okay, okay. This is war. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Tell him how much you love him. Yeah. You be full of love and full of all that glory. Then he says, son. Uh -huh, okay. Speak some words of power. Come on. Come on. Say something.
They say there are lots of, lots of drug addicts in your area. The lots of robbers in that area. And here you are, sweet Jesus. It's nice. Go ahead and worship. But after you're done doing that, sweet Jesus, then Jesus says, all right, let's take over the environment. Come on, come on. Then you say, in the mighty name of Jesus. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Glory to God. You say, you devil of drug addiction, I command you to depart from this town. Go in the name of Jesus. You devil of robbery and violence, in the name of Jesus, I come against you now. Pack your load and go. Kabaya. talking wisdom I don't understand why this is my shoulder talk wisdom brother talk wisdom you're going ah, ah, oh, 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 ah, ah. So be healed be healed have you ever just a moment have you ever met some people? They hit the Ay, mommy, oh mommy. Even some elderly people, they call the name of their grandfather. Hey! Daddy! It's wrong. Say, Ay, be healed. If you don't say that, it may take you to the hospital. And the little thing can become big. Before you know what, they say you need an operation. Then they say they are sorry, they cannot really do it. You have to carry this thing the rest of your life. It was a little thing yesterday. Now you can't understand it. It's gone worse. Give no place to the devil. <laughs> to me, it doesn't matter whether it's small or big. If I hit my heart, heal in Jesus' name. Heal. I'm not ready for any pains. Here. Say this. Uh, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hey. Listen. Even though we are calm, quiet, nice, loving, we are militant. We are. You know, you can't continue. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you. He's not ready for that kind of thing. I just thank you. You know, trying to be sweet to him. Sweet Jesus. He likes that when you worship. Okay, okay, okay. This is war. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Tell him how much you love him. Yeah. You be full of love and full of all that glory. Then he says, son, uh -huh, okay, speak some words of power. Come on. Come on. Say something. They say there are lots of, lots of drug addicts in your area. The lots of robbers in that area and here you are sweet jesus it's nice go ahead and worship but after you're done doing that sweet jesus then jesus says all right let's take over the environment come on come on then you say in the mighty name of jesus hey yeah, 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 yeah. glory to god
You say, you devil of drug addiction, I command you to depart from this town. Go in the name of Jesus. You devil of robbery and violence, in the name of Jesus, I come against you now. Pack your load and go. Kabaya. talking wisdom I don't understand why this is my shoulder talk wisdom brother talk wisdom you're going ah, ah, oh, 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 ah, so be healed be healed have you ever just a moment have you ever met some people? They hit the Ay, mommy, oh mommy. <laughs> Even some elderly people, they call the name of their grandfather. Hey! <laughs> Daddy oh. <laughs> it's wrong. Say, Ay, be healed. <laughs> if you don't say that, it may take you to the hospital. And the little thing can become big. Before you know what, they say you need an operation. Then they say they are sorry they cannot really do it. You have to carry this thing the rest of your life. It was a little thing yesterday. Now you can understand it. It's gone worse. Give no place to the devil. <laughs> to me, it doesn't matter whether it's small or big. If I hit my heal in Jesus' name, heal. I'm not ready for any pains. Here. Say this. Uh, 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 in the name of Jesus. Hey. Listen. Even though we are calm, quiet, nice, loving, we are militant. We are. You know, you can't continue. Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you. I just thank you, Father. I just thank you. He's not ready for that kind of thing. Huh? I just thank you. You know, trying to be sweet to him. Sweet Jesus. He likes that when you worship. Okay, okay, okay. This is war. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Tell him how much you love him. Yeah. You be full of love and full of all that glory. Then he says, son, uh -huh, okay, speak some words of power. Come on. Come on. Say something. They say there are lots of, lots of drug addicts in your area. The lords of robbers in that area and here you are sweet jesus it's nice go ahead and worship but after you're done doing that sweet jesus then jesus says all right let's take over the environment come on come on then you say in the mighty name of jesus hey yeah, 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 yeah. glory to god You say, you devil of drug addiction, I command you to depart from this town. Go in the name of Jesus. You devil of robbery and violence, in the name of Jesus, I come against you now. Pack your load and go. Kabaya.
Jesus is here. 